Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolfer Programming. Today I want to talk about something a little bit different. I noticed a couple months back, or maybe it was a couple weeks back, that um, the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, which I was previously using as a file server, had kind of um, discreetly landed on the Lineage OS supported device list. And <clears throat> try as I might, I couldn't actually find any evidence of it actually running. Um, but they put instructions on the website, <clears throat> and I, one of the problems I had was figuring out uh, where to jump, um, where to jump it to put it into recovery mode. <clears throat> and so there's two two models, and I think the jump pins are in two different places. I've got the original Jetson Nano, and the jump cable is actually um, down here. It's going to be the second one on the inside and you can connect the jumper or any cable from there to the ground wire on the other side and they're actually labeled on the bottom of the board so you have to um, connect a wire from FRC to the ground wire they also said that you can use a screwdriver and you're probably wondering now why is it that I have to jump this cable on boot up and that's to put it in recovery mode. I'm not quite sure of the exact reasoning. For me, it made sense that you should be able to just flash the SD card, but I think there's something on the board itself that it's actually flashing and, um, you know, deep into that board right there. So the installation instru instructions say that you need to jump that wire, which I did. You also have to have a DC power, and to use DC power, you have to have a little jumper right there on those two wires in order to use a barrel jack power supply. And once you do those things and you type in the flash um, bash script, you have to do it on Linux, then it uh, boot up into recovery mode. And I'll show you a couple screenshots here of recovery mode <laughs> for the uh, Jetson Nano. Um, overall, the process is uh, not too bad. Um, it, it, it's, it feels a whole lot like flashing an Android phone. And one of the reasons you'd want to do this, well, really the, the only reason I can think of is to to watch movies. And and Kodi runs really great on this thing. Uh, last time I tried a Kodi build on Linux, uh, nothing really worked. I got it to build, but it, it just wouldn't, wouldn't play anything. The GPU on this thing can play just about every kind of format you can imagine. And it's got HDR support. So basically any file format that you can play on the NVIDIA Shield, you'll also be able to play on the Jetson Nano. Uh, for remote here, I've got a FLIRC adapter, which I've showed off in another video. And um, yeah, so uh, there's a you know there's a couple you know things that don't work as well as I like, but overall, um, it does work. Uh, one of the real big problems I have with it right now is there, there's actually no way that I could find to install an APK without first installing Google Play services. And so while you're flashing the board, you uh, with Lineage OS, you also need to flash open Google apps. And that's on the Lineage OS website in the same, around the same location. So that, that unfortunately is a requirement and that's not in the instructions, because technically it will boot up if you don't put Google Apps. The problem is there's no file manager. You can't put it in USB debug mode because there's no about section on the uh, in the settings menu unless you put unless you install Google services first, which is kind of strange. Um, and that, it's really a shame because like, you know Google TV with Google services is it's basically spyware. So Google lists a whole bunch of things. On the home screen they want you to buy straight from Google Play and that's just not you know for a device that you want to own yourself it's not something you want it's like having ads in the Microsoft Windows start menu it's complete trash nobody likes it um, but overall if you just want a Kodi device you can kind of skip past that get into Kodi and everything will play just fine and I'll show you that here in a second Okay, here we have Lineage OS booted up into the uh, standard Android TV interface. 
So we have the NVIDIA Jetson Nano over there and it is hooked up to the TV. Now something interesting to point out is a lot of these newer devices can be controlled with your TV's remote. It's called CEC or I think that stands for Consumer Electronic Control. And when I first boot up this machine, my TV remote controls it just fine. However, after switching inputs and coming back, it no longer works. So don't buy this device thinking that you won't need a remote uh, because it just it's just uh, nobody's programmed it to work properly. So um, for the for the sake of the video, I've got a PlayStation 2 remote hooked up via an FLIRC adapter. So we're just controlling it via IR. So yeah, this is going to be very similar to the interface you would see on something like an NVIDIA Shield or um, a, a basic Google TV streaming device. And YouTube works. Uh, a couple things didn't have uh, playback for me when I tried or like when I first played a video. It, uh, it crashed, but after a, after a couple videos it, it seemed to work just fine. So here's a hamster video, which my son always watches. And we've got advertisements. <laughs> and we've got actual videos, so we can skip the ad here. And I've got the sound turned off because uh, YouTube likes to give me copyright strikes for using sound. And I can stop, I can get out of it with the back button, just like that. So YouTube works fine, and I'm sure web browsers and stuff work just like any other Android device. And here we actually have Cody, so this is probably the reason you would want to do this. The, uh, the device itself, you know, doesn't have a very strong CPU, but the GPU is very good at decoding video. And so I can connect to my NFS shares, and I can go into my movies folder, and I can find any kind of video I want, and it's going to play. And interestingly, I've tested HDR videos, and when I went to play it, um, my TV did recognize that the device is HDR compatible, and it did whatever kind of handshake it needs to do in order to play in HDR. So a lot of computers actually have a hard time playing HDR content. You need to have, um, everything needs to be like, you know, the right HDMI cable, the right operating system, and all that stuff, so trying to find a 4K video, I can at least start up to show how that works. And I haven't scanned these in yet because I already have a Kodi device, so I'm not actually gonna use this as my main Kodi device. I use a um, Odroid N2 Plus and it, it, you know, it handles that use case for me just fine. So many movies to get to, to find a 4K. video. Okay, so I know for a fact that this video is 4K, and you see my TV has detected that the device is UHD compatible, so it's going to start adjusting, and there you go. And I'm going to stop it now um, so I don't get a copyright strike, but you can see here Kodi runs very well, and because it's got the same GPU that's in the NVIDIA Shield and probably the exact same drivers, I think we could probably expect that it's going to be able to play any video that a NVIDIA Shield is going to be able to play, which is basically everything. So somebody in the comments, they might ask, uh, how does the surround sound work? Does it support, um, I don't know, PCM audio or whatever, eight channels, whatever. I, I don't know. I don't have a, a surround sound system, but I do have a 4K TV. That's um, HDR, and for that use case, it works, and it works very well. So, but there we have it, guys. That's the Jetson Nano with Lineage OS version 18, and it's working fine for that one particular use case. So some things I would like to see in the future is I would like to see all the Google searches be able to be ripped out and some kind of file manager or web browser to get my first, your first couple APKs set up and installed and so we can really have a privacy-oriented um, 
device to play videos. So this would work just fine for a Kodi device and maybe a web browser if every now and then you wanted to browse the web. That's it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, like and subscribe if you'd like to be uh, kept up to date with similar type of content and have a great day. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that proprietary apps like Amazon Prime or Netflix will not work on this device. You can download the app, you can install it, but when you go play a video, it's going to have an error and display an error message because these this OS doesn't have some kind of signature needed for those proprietary apps to work correctly. So don't buy this device with the expectation that you'll be able to play Amazon Prime or Netflix. For that, you'll need um, an official operating system like a real NVIDIA Shield. Just like any other Lineage OS operating system, you'll encounter the same problem trying to play Netflix.